Welcome to Inform Me, a social media conversation for July 16, 2014. I'm Nate Manahan. And I'm Dustin Hickel. Hey, we are going to talk about Comcast. Man, did they screw up? Uh, yes, but did they handle it well? That's another question. I'm also going to talk about a few major platforms who are doing some updates and how to cross social media into the real world. All of this, a question of the week, you'll want to be watching for that, an infographic of the week where we give you great information right here on Informe, a social media conversation. Keep watching. And welcome back to Informe. Dustin, how's it feel back back from vacation? Yeah, it's, it feels great. Uh, I had an awesome vacation, got to relax and just chill out and and do nothing having to do with work at all, all week long. Yeah. It was actually, I mean, it was amazing, it was great. Yeah. Here we're gonna, we're gonna do some full disclosure here. Okay, we're yeah. Tip, peeling back the curtain. We have recorded one episode. We, we did. That no one's ever going to see it unless JT fails us and like, <laughs> puts it. We, you know, we're committed to high quality content and making sure we think through things and give you the best ideas and tips and cover the best news and social media for small businesses. We didn't bring our A game a couple days ago. We're bringing you our A game that's today. That's right, you're getting our A game. And we want to make sure we're committed to that. And that's where we're here, because we're here, social media conversation, and we're going to give you our best stuff. We're going to be as real as we possibly can, and we're going to try to give you guys tips and ideas about how to use social media as a small business. So let's jump in, because we're going to talk about a big business that's been all over social media for the last couple of weeks, yeah. or weeks, a couple days. And uh, that is Comcast. And I yeah. think I, uh, you hadn't seen this before I showed it to you. Yeah. I saw this when it first broke, because I follow Ryan Block, who posted this. What's your first reaction? Like, or maybe describe what it is and what your first reaction yeah, is. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think anybody's surprised that um, having a phone conversation with Comcast didn't go swimmingly. Uh, if anybody out there has tried to call Comcast before, I've had some kind of shaky experiences with them myself. Um, but Ryan Block tried to call Comcast to cancel his service, and he had... I it, don't just, even, it, it, was just, it just got ugly fast. And they just wouldn't cancel, and they just kept trying to take him through a process. And you have to listen to it. We'll put the yeah, link in. We'll put the link in. Um, Ryan Block is an editor for AOL. He's he founded in Gadget. He is connected. They didn't know who they were talking to. That, that shows you, you it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, and he didn't originally plan on recording it, but the guy kept going on, so he flipped on the record and started recording what was going on with this guy. And now it's a viral hit, and I've seen it on all the sides. We're linking here to a Business Insider article, but I saw it on all the major sites. Yep. I saw it covered on CNN and what happens then is when that becomes viral your customer service now shows how poorly tr you treated people and millions of people saw it yep and, and you better be prepared to cover that yeah and social media it doesn't matter when you're on the phone social media has impact yep when you're talking to a person on the street social media has impact it may not be instantaneous it may not be because somebody tweeted about you it may be because they tweet about you later yep. or they take a picture of you or they record your audio phone conversation <laughs> and, <laughs> and show what a you know bleep you were yeah and that's that's the thing social media it, that's we talk about it all the time you've probably heard it if you've watched uh, other episodes of the show social media is word of mouth marketing yeah and so whether this guy had a bad experience on the phone and went and told people in real life, or he went and shared it on social media, the same impact has had. It was a negative experience, and negative experiences get shared more often, more quickly, and obviously on social media more virally than a good experience would have been. And in this case, I think Ryan Block, I'm not going to look it up, but I want to say he has roughly 89,000 followers. So he's not a small account. He's mm -hmm. got a lot of personal brand. He's a tech journalist. But what's interesting is it doesn't mean that it doesn't have to be a person to get a lot of retweets. He's gotten mm -hmm. tens of thousands of retweets because of it and coverage on articles on the front pages of all the major news sites, whether it's tech or gossip. But I was watching yesterday, uh, I saw a retweet of a person that has, I think, I think it was like 600 followers, which is in this range that I have. Yeah. And they had been retweeted tens of thousands of times because they posted a picture of the cast and crew of Napoleon Dynamite 10 years later. It's a 10 year anniversary of Napoleon Dynamite. You di Napoleon Dynamite fan? You know I'm not. Oh man, I'm not. come yeah. on, vote you know, for I never, Pedro, I never come got on. Into it. I never got into it. Well, okay, but now, all that said, <laughs> what, I, what, I, what I saw was, it wasn't 20th Century Fox, I think it's who, the, I, it may actually be, I don't remember who produced that movie, but it wasn't the major producers. It was a PR person, but it wasn't a PR person that had thousands and thousands of followers. You never know what's gonna go viral. Yeah, and you have to manage and watch that at all times, whether you're Comcast or you're the little corner store that is selling widgets. Yep. And your widget may be positive or negatively touted on social media and you need to be ready to interact with that. And if you're not on social media, if you're not monitoring that, 
you're losing out and yep. you it can go to a hell stew really quick absolutely so always pay attention to that if you're not on social media um, make sure that you that you get on there and start to kind of search out yourself and make sure you find out what people are saying about you because uh, like you said it can get it can go real ugly real fast and you have no idea that it's even happening yep so pay attention to that make sure you're out there and checking it out and always thinking you know what if something goes negatively if somebody if some if you have a poor customer service experience and I don't know what Comcast did and we haven't seen them respond all that much publicly yet and we'll cover that if they do in the next mm -hmm. couple of days uh, but what I know is if something goes negatively in your customer service then that needs to be reported quickly because that needs to be monitored on social media and find out if somebody's going to say something yep. or if that person has a following or if that person and it doesn't matter because your customer service should be great no matter what yep but in this case when it starts going negative and your guy doesn't know how to use it and i man come on comcast get your customer service people to it, he just kept saying i want to cancel yeah and the guy kept saying well, why do you want to cancel it shouldn't, you know what? It shouldn't matter at that you point. Know, you know what? If you didn't wow them enough, if your price wasn't competitive enough, is there's a better service for them? If they just, you know what? Yes, we'll cancel you. Here's what you need to do to get our box back. And you know what? If your product isn't good enough, that, then improve your product in which I, yeah, we'll talk about Comcast. <laughs> All right, let's talk about another giant company yeah. called Google. Called Google. The Google Plus. It's what? Nearly coming up on three years old. One of my favorite social platforms. Uh, really unique. Lots of really cool tools and... And we love the, the Google Auto awesome, awesome and the stories. And the stories. And oh, they have so many cool things. They're great on an iPad and on your phone. And, they're and nobody's still there. So it's very, it's very vexing and kind of confusing to me because I think, man, that's such a cool social site. I don't understand why people aren't, aren't just like diving into it. Um, but recently Google has given up on its real name policy. And the question here is, will anyone care? So for background, if you weren't, didn't follow, three years ago when they launched, they made sure that everybody had to have a real name, yep. first and last name, and it was connected to their email account. And so you couldn't be a pseudonym, you couldn't be some type of counter you know, personality. And they kept taking people down and they would just lock them out of their sites if they were not anything that they thought was real. Yep. And it, you couldn't quite understand who they took down or why, and so you just couldn't, you couldn't have create account that was a spoof account or anything like that, yeah. which is the fun part of a lot of Twitter, a lot of social, and even Facebook, yeah. Facebook has spoof accounts. Or, they gave up on that fight. Yep. You know what? I want Google Plus to be relevant. I, I like it, but I, I don't use it. No. Nope. The only relevance that I see a lot of times is that it shows up in my Google. And so that's why I say all businesses have to be on Google+. Plus Because it shows up in your Google search results. And, and if you're a photographer, it's a great... I, I, th I follow a lot of photographers on there and I think they get a lot of business through that. If you're, there's certain verticals that are really relevant. Yeah. But for the most part, guys, I, I, think it, I don't think people are going to notice. Yeah, and let me, let me jump in on that too. I think it, what I'm a little bit wary of is that if you're not, if you don't have to be yourself, you don't have a real name policy, the groups that Google Plus has built up that are very successful, you have to be wary of that because now people can create spoof accounts and just come in and troll and just come in and, and, and ruin yeah. really good conversations. So I think Google might have had that in mind when they created you know Google Plus and had this policy, you know, we want real people to have real conversations and actually connect with one another. And they've really accomplished that with their groups. It's yeah. been really great. That's, that is the uh, the only piece to Google Plus that's really shown that you know that success yeah. that they were looking for, um, like you said, photographers and and uh, cutting edge technology, people and 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 people and they're who are into astronomy. You know, there's isolated groups that are really really focused, but you got to be careful now because now people might not be who they say they are. And I, I wonder, what does this do to YouTube comments? Where they now all YouTube comments are Google Plus comments. Yep. I, I don't. I kind of like the fact that you had to be a real person. At least you were. Tr they were trying to force people to real mm -hmm. people, so you had to like take ownership for what you posted on there. Because there are a lot of trolls on YouTube comments and people. So if you're going to troll, own up and you know pony Let's up and it. say who this is. You are. I. This is what I am, and this is what I say. Now if they're going to be allowed to be spoof accounts, well, we'll see. Yeah. Um, all that said, should you be on Google Plus? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. No. No doubt. Is it extremely relevant across the board and should you be spending hours and hours of time? And if you have a full-time social media person or if you're hiring an agency and you say, you know what, I want them spending hours a week on Google Plus, I'm gonna probably guess in most cases that's not gonna happen. I agree. Um, there are some unique cases. Let's talk Snapchat. Yeah, this is more of a more, more of a personal use, use case here, but Snapchat now has geo filters uh, for quick image location tags is what the title of this uh, article by TechCrunch says. 
It's a really interesting uh, sort of a concept. You can add filters to your Snapchats and Snapchat knows where you are in the world and will give you custom filters based on where you are in the world. Yeah. And I think it's only like focused on major cities right now, New York and, and LA. But that's actually really cool. And it could turn into something really quick. For those who are, their brand and their company is based on their personality and there has some type of travel aspect in what they do and communicating and saying, hey, I'm doing this this week or I'm at the JFK airport getting ready to go to you know Brazil mm -hmm. for the World Cup. Woohoo, ole, 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 go Germany. Uh, but <laughs> Uh, if that's what we're trying to do, um, there could be some cool ways to interact yeah. with people on Snapchat and create that community and do it even faster and Absolutely. just, you know, customization. Yeah. I mean, they were saying here in this article, even for someone like Walt Disney World, when you're at Disney World, why would Disney not take the opportunity to pay Snapchat to when someone slides over to get a filter, Mickey Mouse ears show up yep. and Disney World shows up. That's a great opportunity for Snapchat to make money, but also for me, if I'm at Disney World, I want to tell people that. Yeah. Why not? That's like, yeah. it's the happiest place on earth. So it'd be interesting if they do monetize that way and to what the price point is. Yep. Would it be ever relevant for when you're Snapchatting from my corner dime store? Is, right. it, is it worth it to create something and pay to get it in there? Yeah. Uh, my guess is... It's always going. The price point's going to be high. It's always going to be, gonna be, for, be the, for the, the big, the Macy's in on downtown Chicago. When you go in and shopping, and you send it out to all your friends and say, "Hey, look at this great outfit," and you have a special Chicago Macy's. Macy's, Macy's yeah. yeah, there could be some really cool things there. I don't know that it'll ever have relevance. Right. But the just the city by itself for people that are trying to build community, connecting with each other, that they're using Snapchat. Again, if you're using Snapchat in your business and building your brand, tell us how you're doing. Yeah, I, I I believe that it can be used. I believe that it has. Uh, that's why Facebook jumped in and trying to, to buy it for some exorbitant amount of money. Yeah, and so we'll see. So now, let's, when we talk social media, sometimes social media bridges into the physical world. Yep. And um, Snapchat at this point, I don't know of anyone who's t turning into the physical world, but Instagram is prime for the picking and being able to turn what's going on in the Instagram digital world and turning into something that's physical. Yeah, and, uh, we have Realgram. What's this? Totally. Yeah. Um, well, you know, the little uh, view masters where you click the little thing on the side and the little reel turns around, you can look at the pictures. Well, now you can get custom uh, reels made with your Instagram feed or with your friend's Instagram feed yeah. or, or whatever. Crossing the social world with the real world, I think is really cool. This has really, just a really interesting like gift uh, potential. Yeah. You it's, know, it's For, when you can start doing really cool and unique things, yeah. wh whether it's your feed as a business and sending it out and here's the top 10 new products that we put out and you took pictures of that. Or if it's something where you're just complimenting one of your followers and yeah. going to their feed and putting their pictures on a real gram here and where it's a little, you know, Hey, here's your little ViewMaster here. Um, I, and I see there's all kinds of products to do this. When I was doing uh, fundraising in the nonprofit world, be prior to Instagram in my mm -hmm. old life, because um, I am old, Dustin, yes, I know that. Uh, but when I was doing that, I would often take pictures of people at events, and then we would use a service that would send a postcard, we'd upload it, and send that postcard and that picture and say, thank you for coming to our event. And, and it's just those real pieces, yeah. and they get that in the mail, and it's just really simple, and you can do that through Instagram, and you can actually connect with what they're doing. If you're at an event and you use a hashtag, you could all do all kinds of cool oh, yeah. things. And we start sorting through that stuff with hashtags and going through it, and it's really, we have an app that'll help you do that specifically on Twitter. Yep. Because, uh, you know, I'm great at transitions because I think you should tell them about yeah, absolutely. whatever this is called. Uh, I think it's called Jewicer or Jewicer. Um, I've been working with uh, a couple guys out of Spain here. They, they sent me emails and we've, we've worked back and forth on just my feedback and some input that I had on this product and if it, if it would be valuable for me. Um, and they sent me uh, a free trial. It's still in beta. It's still being developed. But this sort of product is the exact kind of thing that will kind of change the way that you use Twitter. Uh, there are what they call recipes um, that are kind of if this, then that, you know, we talked yeah. about this a little bit, that will happen automatically to your Twitter account. So things like something as simple as it shows you a list of who you're following, but they're not following you back. So is it worth you being following them? Um, things that people who are following you, but you're not following them, you know, so that you can follow them and start having those conversations. But then it starts getting really, really interesting. You can unfollow inactive users or you can follow a user based on the fact that there's a hashtag in their bio that's related to you and your product yeah. somehow. And it starts getting really deep. You can start limiting it to, you have a thousand followers. I'm not gonna retweet anything that doesn't have, that, from people that don't have at least a thousand followers and at least five other retweets. It's really an interesting um, 
sort of way to kind of really narrow down and target specific types of people that you can have specific conversations with. All right, so let's think through a use case. So I like throwing us. Yeah. Ones. So let, we're a bakery, uh -huh. and we're a bakery in uh, Colorado Springs. Okay. And in that, we sell great cupcakes. What could be a recipe that we would create that we could use? Yeah, uh, totally. And guys, I'm throwing. Yeah, just I did not. There. I did not. I created this off the top of my head, and I like to make Dustin yeah. think. Well, the this. cool thing is, is that this is so customizable. You know, yeah. I could I could literally search for the hashtag cupcake. I could search for the word cupcake within a certain region. And if you have a hundred followers or more, but yeah, a use case literally, man, you, you tweet, I could really go for a cupcake right now. Or man, my sweet tooth is just yeah. killing me. And all of a sudden you've got a, a, a recipe set up where pops up in a list. You say, hey man, Nate really wants a cupcake. I think it'd be a perfect thing to settle that sweet tooth. You tweet it, you tweet right back at Nate and say, hey, we've got these awesome red velvet cake cupcakes. Come down and pick one up. We'll have one ready for you in 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, fresh out of the oven or yeah. something like that. And, and really give yeah. that personal like, wow, how did they even interact with me? Right. I just tweeted about my sweet tooth. How did this cupcake company or this cupcake bakery send me a tweet five minutes later that says, hey, come get a cupcake. And starting to de develop outside of your what your persona is. Yeah. And I think that you could start thinking, if you're a cupcake bakery, but you focus on being the fun cupcake mm -hmm. bakery, and you're <laughs> involved with superheroes, and so anytime anyone tweets in your region, I think you, if, I don't know if, because I, I haven't sure looked at this, but, but yeah. if you can geolocate and say, in my region, anytime anyone tweets about Spider-Man, Superman, or Batman, then I want to interact with them in some way. Or yeah. whatever your brand is, and start thinking, I, uh, this is what, it, it's automated of something but per, of personalization right yeah. and uh, I just came up with that maybe automation, somebody did that automation automation of personalization, automation of personalization. <laughs> but that's what we really want yeah. because we want Twitter to be one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. we want Twitter to be interacting but sometimes it's hard to get through all the information well, out there and all the thousands of people tweets. and you become popular and you have 25,000 followers how do you find that yeah. you have a million followers how do you interact with that there are systems and people that are creating great products like whatever you pronounce this and that Jewicer. Juicer. Juicer. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to throw them under the bus a little bit. Tell me how to pronounce that. It could be Juicer. Maybe it's French. French. From <laughs> Spain. I've always thought the Spanish like to pronounce things with French. Right. And I'm not even going to try my accents because I would totally offend someone right now. But this is a great product. Um, can you sign up today as in the beta for? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So you can go to we'll J-O-O-I-C-E-R.com. Right um, you can sign up. It's actually an app that just kind of attaches to your Twitter account. And then you can just start creating your recipes and they already have recipes that are ready to go if you want to just try to plug them in and see how they work for you. Um, really, really great tool here. Um, when you sign up, let us know. Send us an email, tweet us, let us know how it goes. I'd love to let these guys know how, what you guys think of it and, and help them develop a better product too. So, And now the question of the week this week. Mm. And the question is, what's the best app you're using to manage your social media? Maybe you're going to jump on to this one. I'm not going to even try it because I feel like, yeah, it, I just can't pronounce it. Maybe you're going to jump on this or maybe it's Hootsuite or maybe it's Buffer or maybe it's uh, you're using Exact Target's, you know, marketing yeah. cloud for Salesforce and you're doing the big dog stuff. Uh, maybe it's just simply that you really just like the Twitter app. Yeah. Uh, the first person that tweets at me, at NK Manahan, and answers this question, I'm going to give you a $10 Amazon gift card. Wow, hey. First person, all you have to simply say is, you have to do the hashtag Informe, and my favorite social media app is Boom. Fill in the blank. Ten dollar Amazon gift card right there. But we're gonna start curating, and you make sure you use the hashtag Informe and tweet at me at MK Manahan. There you go. Ten dollars so, right there. Ten dollar Amazon gift Think card. Think of what you can get on Amazon for ten dollars. Oh, you can buy like fifteen pens. I mean, <laughs> you can like live it up large. Uh, you could have a Kindle book. I mean, yeah, that, that's true. That's I mean, actually you really, can download really a powerful. Kindle book. You and I'll give you some suggestions on some Kindle books. There you, that you go. Should do. All right. Let's go to the infographic of the week. Yep. Really, really practical application stuff that you can use um, right away. It's a digital trends article. This infographic will tell you the exact photo size for your Facebook cover, your Twitter cover, profile images, display image dimensions, so that you can make sure you have everything that make sure everything fits properly. Uh, we talk about it a lot. That first impression that you make has a huge impact um, when people land on your page. You have to make sure that everything fits. If it's blurry or if it's stretched and kind of wonky looking, that has a negative impact. So you have to make right. sure, and this will help you get there. Well, and here's what happens, is you try to use your profile photo 
on all your on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and they don't. Right off the bat, I can tell you that the Facebook uh, uh, profile photo is 180 by 180. The Twitter fi Facebook or profile photo is 400 by 400. Yeah, they're square, but they're very different. And so you need to think through how are you going to design that. Yep. And let me tell you another app that I think is great to use. Go to Canva, mm -hmm. C A N V A dot com and check them out as a great way to get your images. We talk about being visual. Go back and look at all of our, our you know, past plethora yeah. of great episodes <laughs> of Dustin and I talking about social media. You can, uh, we, we want you to help you be visual. Yeah. This is a great way to look at it. Absolutely, so we'll put this up there, take a look at it, um, and consider all of these things when you, uh, when you start to set up your profiles or if you're editing your profiles. And if you have questions or need help, again, reach out to me at Dustin Hickel on Twitter or Nate at NK Manahan or at Salcha or at Paypro Media. We want to help you develop these products yep. and develop your social media presence. So we want to we want to interact with you. So make yep. sure you're following us. Make sure you're interacting with us. Um, you know, this coming week, as this comes out, I'll probably be tweeting quite a bit. I'm going to be doing some video live production. Yes. Um, I'm not sure what our show is going to look like next week, but I've thought about <laughs> trying to do it as a Google Hangout. We'll do a Google we'll Hangout. Yeah, Let's we'll do see. It. Let's see what happens there if, if we have time. But <laughs> you'll see that we'll be doing some live production for one of our clients here in town. And we're yep. going to do all kinds of creative video and stuff that we do. But all of that, we want to interact with you. So if you watch this, make sure you interact with us. Leave a comment. Tell us what you want to talk about. Anything along there because this is your conversation. We want to do this for people that are running small businesses and how you can make social media work for you. Yep. That's, what That's what we're about. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Yeah.